Learn to make a fully working Battle Royale game you can play with friends using my Udemy course. Try for $13.99 using the link in the description. Okay, in the last video we talked about actors. Unfortunately for us, there are many, many other things in Unreal Engine that we need to talk about, like pawns. Now I know what you're thinking. It sounds like I'm saying porn. I'd like to believe that my audience is mature and well-rounded, but that's probably too much to ask. If you listen closely, you can hear the difference. It's not even the same word. It's not even close. Listen, porn, porn. Totally different word. Anyways, to make a porn, we need to click New C++ Class and click on Porn. This allows us to create pawns. Think of it as a porn hub. Now that we've used the porn hub to create a porn, we're going to use a red tube to show our porn. <laughs> okay, now that I've wasted approximately 50 seconds of your time, we should probably actually talk about pawns and what they do. In Unreal Engine, if you want to make a character that can be controlled by the player, such as a plane, a car, or a rolling ball, something like that, then you're going to need to make a custom pawn, just like how in the last video we made a custom actor. Now hold up, you're probably really confused here, because in the last video I said anything in the level is an actor. So what's this whole pawn thing? Well, a pawn is actually a type of actor that inherits from the actor class. Most of the stuff in Unreal Engine does inherit from the actor class to allow it to be placed inside of a level. So there's different types of actor. To control a pawn, a controller must do something called possessing the pawn. I can't make this shit up. Epic Games decided that's what it had to be called, possessing. In this video, we'll make a basic floating ball that can be moved around with the WASD keys. You're going to be shocked at how little work this actually is. This is the whole thing with Unreal Engine. In Unity, if you want a networked character, have fun writing 6,000 lines of code. In Unreal, you just harness the power of the engine to do all of this for you. Alright, let's get started. To get started, you want to come back into your Visual Studio project for your actual project, and that will be located inside of Documents, Unreal Projects, and then find your project's name. It's going to be inside that folder. When you're ready, go ahead and just open your project by clicking Local Windows Debugger. So the process is the exact same as the custom actor. We're just going to go to File, click on New C++ Class, and we're going to select Pawn instead of selecting Actor. And then you're going to go ahead and click Next. Now, actually, this, uh, this description is pretty good. It's an actor that can be possessed, yeah, I know, and receive input from a controller. So there's another type of actor called a controller, and it will be in here somewhere. There it is, Player Controller. Um, so that's that's the thing that actually takes control of the pawn. We're not going to make a custom controller. Um, you can actually use a pawn without making a controller and doing the whole possessing thing. And I, I feel like it would be a little confusing to do that in this video. We'll do it later on. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and click on pawn. And then we'll go ahead and just type a name. I'm just going to call it ultimate pawn. Actually, let's call it sphere pawn. And then click on create class. Now, in Unreal Engine, whenever you want to accept input from the player, you want to make an input mapping for that input you want to accept. So, for example, maybe you want the left mouse button to shoot a gun in the game. Your first step is to actually define that input mapping. You can do that by going to Edit, Project Settings, and then scrolling down to Input and clicking on that, and here's where your action and axes mappings are. The nice thing about this template is that it's already defined a few of these mappings for us, so we can save a bit of time over making them ourselves. But if you want to add one, you just click the plus to add either an axis or action mapping. You can read the little description to learn the difference between action and axis mappings. If we click the drop down here for move forward, W is 1 and S is negative 1. What we're saying is when we handle the W press, the value for that's going to be 1. And if an S is received, that's going to be a negative 1 value. This is really handy because later on, we can add some velocity to the player just using these values. And I'll show you how we do that in a sec. Let's make a couple of functions that get called when the player presses W and S and A and D. To do this, we're going to make two functions. So I'm going to call this one void move forward. And then we need a float value, and this is the amount. And Unreal Engine will handle calling all of this. It'll, it'll be able to give us this value that we can use for the amount to move forward by. Just like I talked about before, the minus 1 and the positive 1 values. 
We're also going to make another one called Move Right. If you're using Visual Studio, you can right click on Move Forward and then click on Quick Actions and Refactorings, Create Definition, and this will actually automatically make the function for you. We're going to do the same for Move Right as well. Now if I go into SpherePorn.cpp, that saved us the work of having to write that out. Okay, so let's bind our input to those functions that we just made. To do this, we need to use the player input component that gets passed into the setup player input component function. All pawns will have an input component that is just a component that handles taking input from the player. So what we're going to do is we're going to do player input component, bind axis, the access I remember in the engine, we called it move forward. And then we're going to type this because the function to call is inside of this class. And then we type in ampersand to get the address of our move forward function. And then we just do the exact same thing for moving right. Okay, and the same situation as last time, we need to include the header file for U input component. So we just go up to the top and we're going to type include classes components and input component.h. And now that should all work. Okay, here's where you'd think stuff gets really hard, but it's actually where stuff gets really easy. So what we'll do is we'll add a component to the pawn called a floating pawn movement component. So we'll add that under the protected section. And we're going to type class to forward declare it. That just means that I don't have to type and include at the top of the file. So I type in class. I'm going to call this floating pawn movement. Now a floating pawn movement component, I think it's actually called. Oh no, it's just called floating pawn movement. Okay, so what this does is it will allow our pawn to um, move around. It handles all of that, and I think it's even networked as well, which is really cool. And it handles collision detection, all of that stuff. So instead of writing your own movement, you just use the floating pawn movement, and that does it for you. There are other types of movement components, um, and there are much more advanced types, but floating pawn movement is just a really simple solution. What we're going to do is inside of the constructor, we're going to create the component, and we're going to create it the same way we did last time. With our angled brackets, we're going to put the type to make, so floating pawn movement. And then we're going to give it a name. I'll just call this pawn movement. You should always try to just put a name in there that describes what you're making, basically. Then when we move forward, we're going to say floating pawn movement, add input vector. And what this wants is it wants a vector. It wants a direction to move in. The direction that we want to move in is forward. To get the direction that is forward relative to our pawn, we can do get actor forward vector. And you want to multiply that vector by the amount. You remember that the amount is the, that value, negative 1 or positive 1. And if we're not pressing W or S, this value is going to be zero. So we're basically not adding any input at all. Um, but if you're pressing W, this value is going to be one. So we're going to basically add an input vector for forward or negative one would basically get backwards. So it would move us backwards. Now, um, we do need to include the class. So let's just go up here. Floating pawn movement is located inside of classes, game framework, slash floating pawn movement like that. And the um, way that we do it for move right is almost the exact same, except this time we just want to do get actor right vector. So this function is going to get called every frame. Every frame it's going to handle the input. Even if we're not pressing anything, this value is just going to be zero. But if we're pressing W, it's going to be one. S is going to be negative one. And the same for these, these move right um, inputs as well. The next thing that we want is we want to be able to see our pawn in the world. If we go into custom actor.cpp, I'm just going to copy this line and just paste it into my sphere pawn. And I need to take this bit here as well and copy and paste that into my sphere pawn. I just basically want to create a static mesh for my pawn so that I can see it. 
And while we're at it, let's go ahead and create a camera as well. Because if we don't have a camera, the camera is going to default to being right in the middle of our pawn. And you won't be able to see it. We want the camera to be behind the player. So we need to make a camera component as well. So to do that, we just do U camera component, and I'm going to call this camera. We will also forward declare this by typing class. I'm going to copy and paste this line, and I'm just going to type camera. And we'll type U camera component. And we're going to type camera component here. And then I want to set the camera to be behind the player. So to do that, we're going to do camera set relative location. Negative 500, zero, zero. That basically just says put it 500 units behind the actual player. And obviously, again, we need to include the class. So uh, classes. I know this, this is really boring. You never used to need to include all of the, um, the headers, but now you do. So that's in classes, camera, camera component anyway. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Now we're going to have a static mesh and we're going to have a camera. At this point, we can go ahead and try this out. I'm going to go ahead and click. Oh, one last thing as well is one of the components is the root component. What this means is it's kind of like the base that all of the other components get attached to. So we need to choose what we want the root component to be. And I'm just going to make it the static mesh. So down here, I'm just going to type set root component static mesh. And then we can hit local windows debugger. One thing I forgot is we also have to attach the camera to the static mesh so that when the mesh moves around, the camera will move with it. We can do that by doing attach to, or actually uh, it's called setup attachment. And then we just tell it what we want to attach to. And the thing we want to attach the camera to is the static mesh. All right, guys, the moment of truth that everything works. Let's drag the sphere pawn into the level. And this is already good. So you can see that there's a camera behind the pawn, but the actual mesh isn't visible yet. And that's because we haven't assigned it a mesh. We're going to do what we did last time and click on the static mesh. Click the drop down and then let's just call it. Well, let's search for sphere. Here's one called sphere. So I'll just click on that. Here's my sphere. And now I said we needed to make a controller to possess the pawn. You don't actually have to do that. A really quick way around it is if you just click here and just search for possess, you can just automatically pull, uh, possess it by clicking player zero and then hit play. And we can move the sphere around. This is very boring. There's not a lot to do, but there you go. We've got a sphere that moves around. So I don't think you're going to be making the next Crisis or the next Fortnite with what I just showed you anytime soon. But I just wanted to keep it really simple. I wanted to just write a few lines of code and spend most of the time talking about, you know, the pawn and the different components and things like that. So in the next video, we'll add a lot more to this pawn and we'll build on him and make him um, more usable with more features. And you will have also noticed you can't move the camera. We're going to add that as well. Anyhow, I will see you guys in the next video. I never tried asking people to subscribe, but everyone seems to do it. So, um, yeah, please subscribe if you like these videos and you'll get notified when new ones come out. See ya.